I've got this cedar pine boarding that they had and I can see at one point there's like lines I don't know if it's from tape or if it's from old shelving units but I can really see it right here in the background and it's just something that was pretty well covered up with pictures over the years I'd like to kill paint all of it and put something new on the floor yeah I don't quite know what that's all about, but the only thing that's going to fix it is painting over it and it's going to brighten up this whole basement so much. I've got a drop ceiling and there's not a lot I can do with that, but there is a lot of brown wood in here and it just makes the whole space seem small and old. And with modern furniture, it's not so bad. Um, you could go with the cabin look from 1997, 1995. I want to update it and make it look better. I've already taken out the stair rail ballisters. They were this knobby look, all different lengths. Uh, I think just a more modern stair rail is gonna look a lot better. And I may even get rid of the storage space under here if it's not needed. This wall here is the question because if that's holding up the wall up above, I can't do much with it. But that would make a great built-in TV cabinet or closet space going in this way. Let me show you a neat little thing. Ever since my first little baby, every family's done this. Here's Jack at one year old. Here's Jack at 12 years old. He didn't make it back for 13 and he maxed out before 14. Jack just had his 18th birthday. We got Murdoch, Trey, Bethany and George at one. We've been living at the farmhouse and there was no reason to mark anybody any further here. I'm going to take that panel out and swap it from one in the uh, laundry room closet that's right over there so that we can take that home. For my family, I want to save this for you. I couldn't get the boards out. This is the basement at McCormick Street. And since you all were little kids, we marked your height on the wall. Here's Jack. Here's Murdoch. Here's Trey. Here's Bethany. This is Bethany's five. She grew a lot. Or six. Looks like we skipped a year. And here's George. And Daphne was here, I think, when we marked George. No, we were marking Bethany. So that's your measurement wall. You're doing great. So we're starting in on paint today, and I wanted to say real quick, if you happen to have noticed as we were going, I was using a blue primer, and it was left over from painting a house. I had less than a quart, maybe a pint or two pints left, so I used that up. 
um, to keep working ahead of him painting the gaps where the tongue and groove meet and he was using a different canister of primer um, the kills three rolling it on and that's why you are seeing um, different colors so that was blue his was green that was from painting another house left over your paint goes bad and that kills um, one gallon was on clearance yesterday at Home Depot I want to say $52 I don't know what the full price was a five gallon bucket of like bins one two three hundred and thirty seven dollars you've got to use up what you can we've got a five gallon bucket of um, other primer to use and finish the job these are things that you have to consider when doing this is your cost so today we are using what's called oops paint um, I had found another open container with about a pint uh, maybe a quart of white primer so I mix that in with his green so George has joined us today and he is six years old he loves to help painting so he's working on some painting this way so that's to be finished today we've started in doing here and this whole work area the paint over here has had overnight to dry all the primer it says about an hour so back to the oops paint um, you can get this is an oops paint I picked up today nine dollars for a gallon of paint this is from Menards another one here nine dollars a gallon of paint Home Depot is doing their clearance differently than what they had in the past um, and that's where we get the name the oops paint they're mist tints this MT is mist tint somebody had it painted up this color they didn't quite like it they said nah, I don't want it they put it on the shelf at a discount I buy their mist tints and make my own color so what you do is you put it in a five gallon bucket right here it's an old laundry container you can buy plain buckets get a big mixer like this a hand uh, stir stick is not going to work you put this in the end of your drill mix it at a high speed and you just mix in a gallon or a half a gallon at a time till you've got the color you want so this is a kind of a tan with a, a green tone to it so it's not really a beige um, we've got a uh, tan uh, camel colored couch that is going to go down here so that's going to complement it better than the other thing of oops paint that we had and I just test it in a spot so this is the first color I came up with and it was almost the same color as the primer so you can barely see a difference and then this was our mix of this um, you only have a certain amount of time to use this paint so in a couple of years it's gonna go bad it starts getting strong and stinky smelling um, use it up and get rid of it it's rare that we actually throw anything out it is water-based paint so if you see moldy and you know real bad smells it's not usable um, use it up and remember when you dispose of paint they don't want you to put a paint container in the garbage with full paint you have to like stir in kitty litter or pour it out in sand and dirt and let it dry and then throw that away so this is a good way to use up um, extra materials and get the job done so it's going along really good. You see we're getting a nice color change. I'll step back into this cove area and you can see it's coming along. So here's how our walls are coming along. We've got primer going on. The kids are helping. Trey has been helping to paint. It is going so nicely. We're taking a break for lunch. We kind of lost track of time but it's going really well. Look at the difference. Here we're getting into just primer and then up the steps. I'm gonna finish priming that before I take my lunch so that when I come back in an hour or so, by the time we get around with paint, that'll be dry enough to go over. All right, if you like these kind of home renovation jobs on a thrift, on a budget, like and subscribe so that you can follow along with our project the walls are all painted tomorrow 
I'm gonna start pulling out the carpet tack strip. I made a little discovery today here in this corner. Of course, they use concrete nails to get it down. So I'm going to have to start working on that a little at a time. Well, the easy part is taking the carpet out. Today, I'm taking out the carpet tack strip and tying up the wood. And I'm gonna come back with a uh, grinder because these concrete nails that are holding it down, the tops just pop off of the concrete nails and the heads because they are many years old. And let's say it's been a little bit damp down here from not running a dehumidifier. But you can't get to the next step of the floor without doing that. Even if I was to put carpet down again, this is too wore out to be used again to hold the carpet in place. But I think we're going to be going with vinyl plate flooring. because on the rest of the house, when you pull this up, you get whole sheets. And they did concrete nails about every six inches, so that's about all I get at a time. start shopping for flooring, decide what we're gonna do, and work on my ceiling, painting my popcorn ceiling. I'm not gonna smooth it out, I'm just gonna take it for what it is. But it's coming along good. We'll decide about a handrail and what to do. Join us for an after.